Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Naohisa Yahagi speaking about ESD and management of intra and post procedural bleeding. We now move on to Naohisa Yahagi. Thank you, Michael, for your kind introduction. And it is great pleasure uh, being uh, uh, with you. Uh, well, uh, my task is talk about management of bleeding during ESD procedure. As everybody knows, uh, we frequently encounter bleeding uh, during the long lasting procedure. Of course, most of minor bleeding, such as bleeding coming from the tiny blood vessel, can be easily managed by close tip of dual knife. In that situation, we usually use a uh, very low setting of spray coag, which is 1.2. And for the measured breathing, it is necessary to use uh, grasping uh, forceps, such as uh, coag grasper. We usually use soft coag uh, 6.0 uh, for the uh, active breathing. Uh, but in case of finding very thick blood vessel, we can seal it without causing any bleeding by applying open tip of dual knife and using a very low setting of post coag, which is 0.3 or bio 3. It is usually very effective. And I would like to show you actual procedure, uh, which is a very uh, big resection uh, located at the lower rectum. As you can see, uh, there is a bulky mass at the middle of big le lesion. And usually this kind of big uh, uh, bulky mass uh, cause lots of fibrosis because of the movement of bul bulky component. And uh, muscle uh, layer itself sometimes retracted by the big nod nodule. So uh, this is a really challenging situation. Sometimes we should cut through the muscle layer itself. I would like to show you actual procedure using video clip. Now you can see the uh, oral side in a little flex position, and this is the anal side from the anus. I usually start uh, this kind of procedure from the oral side in the little flex position. And of course, I prefer to use gastroscope uh, instead of using chromoscope because of the better maneuverability of the endoscope by using gastroscope. I can easily control the, the direction from left to right or right to left. After injecting sufficient amount of grease oil solution to the submucosal right layer, I started initial mucosal incision at the anal side, uh, oral side. Then quickly start submucosal dissection by tracing inner edge of the incised area to open the submucosal space. And if there is some uh, breathing coming from the tiny blood vessel, we can easily stop it by applying cross tip of dual knife and use the spray coag 1.2. That is usually good enough. After the hemostasis, we can continue the submucosal dissection. And if it is necessary, we can give additional submucosal fluid cushions through the knife at any, any time because this knife has injection capability by pressing foot pedal, we can pump up the target tissue very easily uh, just pressing the foot pedal. Then following mucosal incision and submucosal dissection become much safer. For the middle size of uh, blood vessel, we don't have to care uh, it because we can dissect there without causing any bleeding by using standard uh, coagulation current, which is swift coag, uh, 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 3.0. Uh, but in case of finding much sick blood vessel like this, well, we should avoid touching it before uh, coagulating it. Therefore, I usually dissect the surrounding tissue to expose the main trunk of blood vessel, then apply open tip of dual knife and using low setting force coag, which is 0.3 that is very, very effective to coagulate the sick uh, blood vessel. Then uh, we can cut it uh, without causing serious bleeding. In this particular case, uh, I found the tiny uh, opening of the blood, blood vessel. Then I applied the uh, cross tip of the L knife to completely abrade the exposed blood vessel. After finishing uh, nearly uh, uh, 
30% of submucosa dissection from the oral side, I switched to the anal side, then injected again a large amount of glycerol solution to the submucosal layer and started a partial mucosal incision and partial submucosal dissection. The maneuverability of the endoscope becomes uh, very poor because of the presence of inner canal, but still we can control direction uh, very smoothly by twisting the shaft of the endoscope. And transparent food is usually very effective to open the submucosal space. By opening submucosal space, uh, we can visualize the uh, submucosal layer. Now I'm ex extending the mucosal incision to the lateral side to open the submucosal space much wider. Of course, uh, right after the uh, partial mucosal incision, I trace the inner edge of the inside the area using a uh, swift coagulation mode to uh, dilate the opening of the in inside area. It is quite safe manner uh, because I catch the part of the submucosal tissue uh, with the small tip of dual knife. Uh, this dual knife has only 1.5 millimeter long metallic tip, uh, which is very effective for uh, performing submucosal dissection and mucosal incision in the column. Now uh, we can see the white muscle layer on the right side and the dissected area comes down to the left side according to the gravity. I already completed the circumferential mucosal incision and uh, dissected the most of the uh, soft uh, submucosal tissue. But unfortunately, there was really severe scar area caused by the movement of the bulky mass. Now you can see the very fibrotic area and unfortunately, mass area also retracted by the big mass. So I decided to cut through the muscle area itself. Uh, I carefully uh, uh, give additional fluid cushion to the surrounding submucosal area and cut the muscle area using dry cut. And it was uh, relatively sm smooth, but unfortunately caused uh, a bleeding. Uh, this bleeding was not so severe, therefore I applied four millimeter coagrasp to the bleeding point and carefully cat catch the uh, bleeding point and coagulate it using uh, soft coag. It is usually very effective for the middle size of artery. It was nicely coagulated, uh, then uh, I could continue the uh, uh, difficult procedure. Now you can see the retracted muscle area Fibrosis was so severe and it was very difficult to cut through even if I was using dry cut mode. And it becomes a little bit dirty and the maneuverability was uh, relatively poor. But uh, uh, we should cut through uh, this area to complete the procedure. Unfortunately, there was really sick blood vessel uh, within the muscle area. So I decided to use much wider cup coagulus bar, which is five millimeter coagulus bar, uh, which I usually use only for the gastric ESD procedure. Uh, but because of the bigger cup, I could nicely stop the uh, severe bleeding, then restart the uh, muscle dissection uh, using cutting current uh, with 1.5 millimeter dual knife. Uh, it was really tough procedure, but finally I could cut through the uh, fibrotic area and uh, finish the resection. Now you can see the resection bed. It becomes a uh, little bit irregular because of the, the severe fibrosis and I partially cut the muscle area itself, but fortunately there was no perforation at all. Uh, well, this is resected specimen. Resected size was more than 12 centimeter and actual uh, tumor uh, component was 11 by 7.5 centimeter. Fortunately, uh, this was just a mucosal cancer not having deep submucosal invasion and there was no vascular infiltration. Uh, therefore, we achieved the curative resection even for this very tough case. And clinical course was uh, surprisingly, it was very, very smooth. Uh, there was no uh, stricture formation, although there was uh, mild deformity at the 
uh, anus, uh, but the, this patient didn't complain anything about defecation. As I mentioned, vessel sealing using low uh, wattage of post-coag is very effective to seal the sick blood vessel like this. But still, sometimes we encounter serious bleeding like this. But please don't get panic with uh, this kind of serious bleeding because uh, now we have new weapon to fight against uh, severe bleeding. Olympus just launched a uh, new uh, imaging technology, which is red uh, dichromatic imaging RDI. It's a kind of new narrow ba band imaging. By using this uh, RDI, we can easily visualize uh, sick blood vessel located the deeper part of the submucosal layer and also we can easily visualize the bleeding point. Uh, I would like to show you actual uh, example of uh, RI, RDI. Uh, this is RI gastric cancer located at the uh, upper gastric body, which is a vascular rich area. Now you can see the very stressful situation, but by switching uh, RDI, we can easily visualize the bleeding point and uh, we can reduce the psychological stress uh, by changing uh, color red from, uh, from red to uh, yellow. Uh, so I believe that uh, this new imaging technology, RDI, uh, uh, is very helpful for the management of breeding during the long-lasting ESD procedure. Thank you very much for your kind attention.